Hello and welcome to Daily Dose Radio, a five-minute a day podcast studying the Psalms verse by verse, recorded here in the dining room of the Bible Bistro, located in Sharonville, Ohio. Hey there, friend. Welcome back to Daily Dose Radio here in the Bible Bistro. And this week and next week, we're going to be studying Psalm 78. This is a long psalm. This is a dandy, as they say. I think this is, what, 38 verses or 78 verses long, something like that. I'm trying to turn my page here, and it is not cooperating. Yes, and it's not going to cooperate. So I'm just going to say 78 verses. I think that's right. So it's a long one. We're going to divide this in half, and even dividing it in half over a period of 10 days, it's going to mean that we're going to read many verses. (laughs) Like today is going to be eight verses. So we're taking a bigger bite than I would normally like to take, which also means that I'll probably have to go a little bit longer every day than five minutes just to get it all in. Okay, so this is going to be a little more than five minutes a day. I know my elevator speech is five, you know, studying the Psalms verse by verse. It's five minutes a day, five days a week. But, you know, this is going to be a little bit more than that. So please give me a little room here to uh, give you some more because we're just going to have so much more text that uh, I'm going to cover and so much more here that's important. I'll just give you today the introduction and we'll read the first eight verses, and hopefully I can treat those quickly today. So this Psalm 78 is another psalm of Asaph, except this is not a psalm. This is a masculine, which is a teaching psalm, and boy, does it teach. And that's the point of this psalm, actually, is to teach the generations to come. I mean, he, he sets that up for us very clearly here in the first eight verses. So, this psalm, I think, this psalm, because it's of Asaph, I think it following on the heels of Psalm 77 is really an expansion of Psalm 77 verses 10 through 12, let's say. 10 through 12, because in 10 through 12, he says, I'm going to remember the works of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of all thy doings. That's 77 Uh, 11 and 12. And here in 78, he, I think what he does is unpacks that to his pleasure. He takes his time sort of just going through it piece by piece. What does it mean to remember? What does it mean to meditate? What does it mean to talk about these things and why? Why is it important to do so? And then he, he shows us how he's going to do it. So we'll read today verses 1 through 8, and he sets, as I said, he sets up for us the reason why this is important and sort of his mission, you know, in writing this particular psalm. So verses 1 through 8, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the word of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. For He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born." who should arise and declare to their children that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. All right, so as I said, big bite today, uh, read eight verses of this and notice how he sets this up for us. He says, I'm going to, and it's very poetic, isn't it? Give ear to my law, climb your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known. So he's not going to make something new here. He's going to repeat the dark sayings of old. These old things that he's going to tell us may be new to this generation, but he wants us to, he wants it to be known 
because verse 4 he says, We will not hide them from their children, that is, the children of the fathers, which we all are, right? We're the children of our fathers, our grandfathers, we're all children in that sense. And so we're not going to hide them from the generation to come. Verse 5, for he established a testimony which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to our children. So where is that? That that command or that testimony, that law that we are to teach our children? Well, it's found in Deuteronomy 6 in verse 7. And there we find the admonition to fathers to teach their children. And how are they to do it? They're to speak about the things of God. We'll go there and read that. And you'll see this command And the reason why this is important is so that the generation to come, this is verse 6, might know them. Might know what? The dark sayings, the old sayings. They might know them, the wonderful works of God. They might know them. So that's why we're doing this. That's why we're teaching and reminding and speaking and living out those sayings is so that the children, our children, might know them and that they might teach them to their children that they should arise and declare them to their children, there in verse 6. That, here we have more reason, they might set their hope in God. This is really the reason, this is the heart of it, right? It's not just that we're teaching just to teach it, and it's not we're, we're not just repeating it because it was repeated to us. We're repeating it because the repeating it to us had an effect. The words of God always have an effect. And the effect on us was to set our hope in God. So don't we want that for our children? Absolutely. So what do we do? We repeat them too. We tell them too. We meditate on them and we show them out to our children. So this idea of teaching and meditating is all for the point of that our children might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. So if they're sharing it with their children and their children then share it with their children, then nobody's going to forget the wonderful works of God. But instead, we'll keep. So notice that, not forget, but keep. Now we're going to have forget here in just a minute, and we're going to talk about, well, actually that's tomorrow, isn't it? We'll do that tomorrow. We'll talk about forgetting tomorrow, because that's an important theme here. We have the two that's, that the generation to come might know, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Now, I don't know about Asaph's generation, but I'm sure he could look back to periods before his generation and say, okay, those people... You know, they weren't right. They didn't keep their hearts right. And he could also look back to the history of Israel and look at their wandering in the wilderness and then look at the weal and woe that they experienced in the land as they turned away from the Lord. Just go to Judges and read the book of Judges and you'll see that, they, you know, they would turn away and then they would turn back. Then they would forget and they would turn away. Then they would remember and turn back. And so uh, that cycle that happened. And so when he says they they might not be as their fathers, a rebellious generation, well, Asaph has a lot of example to show, doesn't he there? Yeah, a generation that set not their hearts aright. So he wants the next generation not to be like that. And how do you not be like that? (laughs) How do you not be? You not be by remembering, by teaching. By setting your hope in God. That's how that happens. But setting your hope in God doesn't just happen automatically. It's not by osmosis. It's by the fathers teaching the children and setting the example and showing that this is how we live. This is what we do. This is who we worship. So it's very important. So everything that Asaph does here in these first eight verses sets up for us What's going? what he wants to happen. Now, tomorrow we're going to look at, we'll begin in verse 9, we're going to read down through verse 14. And he starts to show us what it is that he wants us to remember. He actually begins here in these next few verses. And then we'll get into more about the things of old, the works of God, and the corruption of the fathers, that what he doesn't want this next generation to have. So he, he, he shows what they did, tells about it, 
and then shows the goodness and the mercy and the loving kindness and the tender love of the Lord to his people. Okay, so that sets us up for the remainder of the psalm. So join me tomorrow. We're going to start in 9, Psalm 78, verse 9, and we'll read down through 14. So join me then here on Daily Dose Radio. Thanks for listening to Daily Dose Radio. For more fresh and delicious Bible studies, podcasts, books, and more, check out the Bible Bistro online and on YouTube. Join me again next time for Daily Dose Radio.